We have some new antibiotics. These are cephalosporin beta-lactamase inhibitors. Um, we, have, we have three new ones, right? We have, what, Zerbaxa, um, Avacaz, and uh, Vabamir. Uh, where do we go with these things? Can you, can you run them down? So um, all of those antibiotics are a combination of a, 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 some kind of a beta-lactam and a, a beta-lactamase inhibitor. And the beta-lactamase inhibitor would be the bodyguard. So you give an antibiotic in the bodyguard, knowing that the bacteria is going to try and break you, and the bodyguard is going to take care of that. And so there are two different approaches. One approach is to take an antibiotic that has been very useful for many, many years, like a carbapenem, like a ciftazidine that we've been using, and a touch of, but resistance to it has developed over the past uh, several years, and a touch to it, a uh, bodyguard that will prevent the enzyme and, and, and re-institute uh, 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 the, the susceptibility to this, this, this antibiotic. And so Avicaz is such an antibiotic, and, and, and studies with Avicaz showed that by adding Avibactam to ceftazidim, you would regain susceptibility against ceftazidim-resistant bacteria, and ceftazidim-resistant bacteria that would kill animals and, and, and humans as well and would be susceptible to um, uh, Avicaz. Zerbax has a different approach in which um, the cephalosporin, the beta-lactam component, is actually the new component. It's a new cephalosporin that has particularly good ability to get through the outer membrane of Pseudomonas and resist some of the activity of the some of the efflux and so forth. And it's given with an older beta-lactamase inhibitor, uh, tazobactam, to allow uh, the antibiotic to resist those beta-lactamases. The beta-lactamase of Pseudomonas is producing or mostly those AMC. And then Vabramer, which is the newest addition, which is a combination of meropenem uh, and Vabrobactam. Vabrobactam being a very, very active beta-lactamase inhibitor against those enteric bacteria that produce those ESBL type, those type A, as we call beta-lactamases. It's not that powerful against those AMCs that Pseudomonas is producing. So in many uh, circumstances, Vabramer is actually not going to increase your ability to treat much more than just using meropenem. I think it's important to realize, though, that besides talking about the in vitro activity of all of these different agents, they all have very different clinical data sets that are currently available to us. So for example, uh, Avicaz, which has been around the longest, has just completed or has just presented its nosocomial pneumonia data set. Marin was one of the lead authors on that. And I think there are issues with that data set because the mortality rate in that population was remarkably low. So I think there's a lot of question about the face validity of whether it was actually studying pneumonia. He could just be remarkably good, you know. Oh, he is remarkably good. I don't <laughs> deny that. Um, uh, but just not as good as you. Uh, and then you have CT, which has uh, some interesting clinical data, but no pneumonia data. Those pneumonia data are currently- CT is Zerbaxis. You're correct. Zerbaxis is currently undergoing its pneumonia trials. And I think it's important to realize that the dose they're studying for pneumonia is actually twice the dose that's currently approved. So you never want people arguing from one disease state to another without understanding the differences in the pharmacokinetics. Uh, and then when you look at Vabamir, uh, you know, again, no pneumonia clinical trial, but a critically ill kind of population, highly drug resistant population study called Tango 2 uh, on top of their urinary study, also a very unique population. But you know, although the Vabamir, the, the boronic uh, beta-lactamase inhibitor doesn't add anything to its anti-pseudomonal coverage, the dosing of the meropenem to optimize the pharmacokinetics, which you could do today if you wanted to, doesn't require you buying Vabramir, uh, is the dose of meropenem is huge and given over a three hour infusion three times a day to really pick off those higher MDR kind of pseudomonal isolates. But again, it, it's optimizing a principle you could do today without having to buy their molecule. So realize all of these drugs are very nuanced in their clinical trial data. All of them have been designed to address different problems. In the pipeline beyond that, we have uh, a molecule, uh, plasmomycin, you know, an enhanced uh, uh, aminoglycoside to hit carbapenem resistant Arabacteraceae. And you would think, oh, it's an aminoglycoside, it's gonna do something for Pseudomonas. It doesn't do anything extra for Pseudomonas, right? And we have uh, a drug called imipenem uh that's in clinical trials, which is another beta-lactamase inhibitor, and you're thinking, well, it's already added to imipenem, it's not gonna do anything for Pseudomonas, it's really a CRE drug. Uh, it turns out it may actually do something for Pseudomonas. So the story is unfinished for all of these agents right now, and by, you know, by the time this taping is done and live, there could be new data on all of these issues. So anybody who tells you they're an expert on these novel agents is trying to sell you beachfront property in New Orleans. I mean, don't, <laughs> you gotta be very cautious about what you do with this data because it's really constantly emerging. You know, somebody mentioned one of these drugs is particularly good getting through this gelatinous capsule. Which of those drugs it's, was it? It's a ceftolazine, which, which was designed as an anti-pseudomoral cephalosporin and actually the newest cephalosporin. So that's the Zerbaxin. 
that's part of uh, that's part of the Zubraxa. And but, but one thing I, w I just to continue on that with those new agents, I think the likelihood that we'll need we'll have to use cholestin and drugs like that, desperation drugs, desperation antibiotics is decreasing tremendously. And, sure. and, and and our ability to treat those very resistant pseudomonases has increased. Anytime and, somebody... And with, 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 with antibiotics that we would consider to be effective mm -hmm. antibiotics. Anytime anybody's telling me that they want to give a polymyxin, yes. I'm thinking they're desperate. Yes. Because that's a nasty, nasty... Right, it's not a drug you want to give someone you love. No.